And welcome back to another Adero Learning Live video. My name is Kim Cofino, and today I'm going to be sharing with you some highlights from our new YouTube series, Coaching Fundamentals. I have had the absolute pleasure of interviewing 12 experienced coaches from around the world, and we talked about some of the key learnings and takeaways and skills that they have learned as being coaches for the last however many years they've been coaches. And there was one really kind of big takeaway that I got from all of those interviews. So I interviewed 12 people, had 12 really awesome, deep and meaningful conversations and calls with um, great coaches that I will list in the comments because I don't want to try to list everybody's name right now. Um, and one of the big key takeaways I got from those conversations is the importance and the power of practice your coach, practicing your coaching craft. And if you see me looking over here at the side, it's because I have my notes right here. Um, having these conversations with experienced coaches was great professional development for me and not only reminded me of really key aspects of being a successful learning coach, but highlighted some things that I haven't thought about in that particular way before. And one of the things that really kind of came out or came to the forefront in my conversations is that there are foundational skills in coaching that are really concrete that you can practice and essentially skill up at over time through purposeful practice. And some of the things that kind of came to the forefront, there were like four kind of key themes. Um, one of them is the language and the way that you talk to people, and I have some on that in a minute. Um, another one is your body language, your physical kind of demeanor. Another one is the way that you demonstrate care. And then the fourth one is the habits or values that you are kind of living in your everyday life as a coach. So I would like to talk about those four key elements that you can practice to really perfect, perfect your coaching craft. So that first one is language. And I think this actually comes more into like conversation, so not just language, because of course everyone in these calls talked about the importance of really active listening as a coach, like being present in the moment and listening to what others are saying. And to really demonstrate that you're listening and you're in the moment, you might pause after people speak to give yourself a moment to think and reflect. And then you would paraphrase what they said to really demonstrate that you understood and to clarify and confirm and make sure that what you think they said is what they actually said. So just that practice of active listening, giving yourself the time to pause, and then paraphrasing what the person, the teacher is saying, those are three really key kind of language conversational based skills that you can practice and skill up on any time. And one of the kind of deeper thoughts on that for me as a talker is it's really hard for me to pause and think in a conversation. I feel this pressure of like always having something to say right away. And in my interview with Heather Dowd, she talked about having that same experience as well, but that it is really important for us to demonstrate for the teachers that we're working with that these conversations are deep, they're challenging, they are really getting us to think about what we're doing and why we're doing it and how we can do it best. And that means that we need to take some time to pause and reflect and gather our thoughts before we continue talking. So it's not about having the answers immediately, it's about thinking deeply about this conversation. So those three skills of listening, pausing and thinking, and then paraphrasing are three ways that we can demonstrate the depth of the conversation and also have kind of a more meaningful conversation when we're coaching. Alongside of that, when I was talking to Patrick Green, he talked about the importance of using non-evaluative language and also to do that, to focus on the data of what you actually see in the classroom or what you hear the teacher saying, as opposed to your impressions or your perspective on those things. And again, for someone like me who is kind of tends to be kind of a cheerleader and always wants to like praise everything, that's a really challenging thing. So taking time to practice using non-evaluative evaluative language and thinking about opportunities to actually collect and then reflect on and share data with teachers is another kind of element of the language that we use in our coaching conversations. So we've got listening, pausing and thinking, paraphrasing, using non-evaluative language, and focusing on data. Those are all key elements in the language of how you have a coaching conversation that I think we can practice on a regular basis to improve over time. That was my first, my first idea is language. Uh, my second idea for today is something simple and it's body language. And it was um, Trisha who actually said one of her coaching strategies is to sit on the same side of the table 
as the person she's coaching. And that is a very simple but concrete thing that we can do as coaches to kind of give that feeling of we're up here, we're in it with you, we're on your side. Not only like mentally in terms of helping you reach your goal, but we're physically on your side. And that's a really, really small and easy thing to do. It's something you can practice in all of your coaching conversations. And you probably will notice that when you're sitting next to someone, you start to mirror their body language. And so that idea of concretely making the effort to mirror someone's body language can also help bring you into that feeling of rapport, that feeling of connectedness that you get in a quality conversation. So that's my second tip is a quick and simple one from Trisha, but it's I think something that can be really powerful for body language and building rapport. A third thing, I got this one from Heather, so I'm bringing Heather back again. Um, one of the things that I struggle with as a coach is sometimes I'm seeing so many different people and so many different things are happening, I can forget small details. And Heather talked about using a notebook to write down some really key details about the people she's working with, like upcoming important events or things that they might be stressed out about or even something as simple as their favorite candy that maybe they can bring, Heather could bring to that person if they're having a rough day. And she used a paper notebook in her example, but we talked a little bit later off camera and now she uses Google Keep. And so I think that's a really nice, simple strategy, a way to show that you really care about the people that you're working with to be able to remember things that are important to them. And for me, that's something I know I can't keep in my head, but it's something I could jot down on my phone and know that I have ready for me whenever I need it. So that's my third tip, is finding ways to demonstrate that you care about the people you're coaching. And lastly, I wanna talk about the habits or values that we demonstrate kind of in an everyday our attitude and our behavior and the choices that we make as a coach. And these tips came from almost all of the coaches and I'll try to put in people's names as I remember them, but they came from so many different conversations that really it's not fair to give credit to these things for just one person. Um, but something that Clint said a number of times, um, I heard it from Trisha, I'm trying to remember who else, but I heard it from lots of people, the idea of really empathizing and understanding the hard work that teachers are doing on an everyday basis the process of being a teacher is super challenging. We know this, we have a million things going on. So being really empathetic and respectful and appreciative of all of the hard work that teachers are doing. So like um, Marcello said in my interview with him, really knowing that their day is really busy and we're just asking for a little piece of that time and having that kind of humbleness and respect for the work that teachers do is something we can practice and demonstrate in our everyday habits. Um, Another thing I think Ben said, and maybe Marcello said as well, is this awareness that coaching is a place of vulnerability for teachers. In the classroom, we're really confident. We know how to do our jobs, but then when we come out into a coaching conversation, as a coach, we're asking that teacher to really open up and be vulnerable and expose things that maybe they wouldn't normally feel comfortable talking about with a peer. And so being aware of that vulnerability and acknowledging it and respecting the teacher's risk in being vulnerable with you is something we can demonstrate through our own habits and kind of the way that we talk. Um, a couple of other really nice things uh, I know that Dave said was to always start from a place of success. Actually, Patrick said that as well, that this is not a deficit model. This is something that we're building from your current success and then wanting to build more success from there. So I think that kind of perception of the way that we think about coaching and the way we talk about coaching with teachers can be really powerful to help avoid the stigma of coaching being maybe something for teachers who need support. No, we're actually pulling from your areas of strength and just making you even better. And that's something that Carrie Lee highlighted as one of her challenges, that stigma of coaching. And then I think two, uh, two final thoughts, and these came from uh, Ben Sheridan and Trisha Friedman, that coaching is not about you. It's about the learning. It's about the teacher and the students. So it's really important to remember that your pace, which is oftentimes much faster than the school's pace, is not everyone else's pace. So thinking about the school as a bigger environment that maybe you wanna move faster than others, and that might not always be realistic. So remember that the coaching conversations that you have are about the learning that happens in the classroom between the student and the teacher, and it's not really about you as the coach at all. So those were some habits and values that really came out and 
shined in the different conversations that I had with coaches throughout this coaching fundamental series. So there were four kind of key themes that I talked about today, the language that we can use in our coaching conversations, the physical or body language we can use when we're building rapport with teachers, the ways that we can demonstrate care and helping teachers understand that we really do value the time that we spend with them, and then the habits or the ways that we talk about coaching. And all four of those, I think we can practice on a regular basis so that we are building our coaching craft and taking time to really refine the small elements that make us successful as coaches. The reason I'm sharing all these things and doing this awesome YouTube series, which just launched this week, is because our next cohort of the Coach Micro Credentials starts on May 1st, and we will be opening up that cohort for you to join in the last two weeks of April. So please check our website at adurolearning.com to see how you can find out more about the Coach Micro Credential. Watch our YouTube series. I will put the link in the comments. It is fantastic. We've just released one video so far, but there are 12 videos in the series, and really there is so much learning there. Um, we have a new coaching book coming soon called Your Coaching Journey, and I'm really excited about that. It is the follow-up to this awesome book, Your Connected Classroom, which we released in October. So if you haven't checked this one out, please check this one out too. And if you want kind of a preview of what might happen in the coach micro-credential, check out that YouTube series. And then also we're having a webinar on April 22nd, and we're going to feature all of the coaches from that YouTube series. So you can kind of see the types of learning, the types of deep conversations, the community that you will build in that micro-credential at that webinar on April 22nd. So there will very soon be a sign up on our website and coming out in our newsletter so that you can join us for that webinar. So hopefully all of these things are interesting and relevant for you. If you have questions or ideas or you want to see something different, please drop a comment today here in this video or drop it on our YouTube channel or send us a tweet. We really want to make sure what we're sharing is relevant and useful for you. So please let us know what you'd like to see, what's interesting to you, what you don't like, and we will try to customize for your needs. So thanks for joining me today and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.